Eli Yastrib's log. Our initial engagement against Clan Wolf was a success, and we have been contracted for a second job. This time we work for House Steiner, but once again, failure would mean the loss of our base and our equipment, not theirs. Unlike the Free Worlds League, Steiner has not given us any support in the field. On the other hand, our guaranteed pay has been doubled. This will be the first true test of our capabilities on our own. A mercenary's life is full of tough choices and tougher disappointments. Hopefully today won't be filled with much of the latter. So we do have vision already on our opponents, but we're going to be reserving just off the bat because if you haven't moved yet, generally speaking you have tons and tons and tons of evasion pips. So we want these carriers and tanks and all those sorts of things to move before we engage. And this is really not too bad of a problem. I like it when our opponents engage piecemeal, and particularly when they engage close enough. Well, in theory, some of our mechs could have gotten a melee there, but I think he's in such a weird position that we can't seem to get it going. You'd think that we could, but if that's the case, let's take a look at this guy's internals. What happened the last time was the modifications to ECM have made it so that sensor locks no longer strip evasion off of that mech. However, this tank does not have ECM. That means we're going to be on the move trying to find a good position for Captain Eli Yastrib himself, away from danger, yet close enough to do what he needs to do and sensor lock this IFV. That should... <laughs> That should drop him to four pips of evasion, and that means we can get some good fire online. A little bit of return fire, but seven evasion pips on the Jenner 2C should keep us safe and sound and snug and all of that good stuff. So, the Whitworth has been reworked a little bit. Most of the jump jets have been stripped out in favor of heavier armor, now sporting about 800 at maximum, which is pretty decent if you ask me. Uh, another thing to note is that the Whitworth does have Artemis 4 LRM 10s, which means that we get some improvements to accuracy with direct fire. However, range brackets are still going to be causing a problem, and that's what's stalling me right now. Um, I'm half tempted to just move past this guy and get some sort of vision and combats going with the next vehicle. Yeah, let's engage with the Howler. We'll engage with Eli as well during the next turn. This guy doesn't have very much evasion at all, and not too heavy armor on the Zorias. They're a little bit more of a uh, beginning game sort of opponent. That's a missed Lynx. I would love to have that. Those ER micro lasers are incredibly terrifyingly deadly. The fact that he has lost his ER large is about the only reason we haven't already taken a fair amount of fire. That's going to be a problem. Okay, we need to kill this guy first, the IFV, and then perhaps the Zoria and stay out of range of that missed Lynx. If he closes, we're in deep shit. So, what does that mean for us exactly? Let's take a look. You know, having just said that, I'm gonna go after the Zoria. It's the better guaranteed kill. LRM 10's 80% chance of hitting. It's not guaranteed off this volley, but it's certainly the better way of making progress with what little we have to work with. So let's get Pharaoh moving up. And this guy, if he moves any sort of sensible movements during the next turn, we should be able to get a kick on him with the Whitworth, which would be a bunch, a, a lot more effective anyway. So I don't like being this close to my own max Friendly fire is turned on and uh, of course accidental fire from our opponents missing their original shots can come back to bite us, but structure exposed on the Zoria is very nice. Alright, it's not a kill, but it is enough to allow us to potentially crit seek decently well. That's a big sensor lock. Okay, we need to move, we need to move now, we need to move both these guys very fast and very far away from that missed Lynx. Or, we can go in and try to get the kill. 20, 15 armor, very, very light armor on the back of that thing, and that is something we could try to make him pay for. The issue is, once again, tons and tons of evasion. So, I'm thinking maybe we sensor lock him with the Jenner 2C, and then go in with both the Howler and the Cicada. It's still not enough damage to guarantee a kill, though. And that's quite a big problem. So let's see what they do on 8. That's the Zoria. You know, shooting it against the Whitworth is fine. We're going to take more hits on him because of reduced evasion. But again, 800 armor is pretty meaty. And that is something I definitely, definitely don't mind. Um, okay. Let's just keep reserving down. Let's let them make their mistakes before we make our own. Hmm. Okay. There's another IFV. 
Missile scrambling protected? Interesting. I'm not familiar with that. It might have been another change to the mod since we've last played. Lots of these Swantovits. Huh. Okay, pretty heavy damage into the Cicada. I think what we're going to do is we're going to move these guys past and then fire back at the Mislinks, and that way we need to keep a right side facing with the Cicada, but we should be able to do it. Five pips of evasion. I don't love those chances to hit. I can go in for either a kick or a punch here. I think let's do the kick. That should drop evasion. There it is. Evasion's gone. Means that the sensor lock was a waste of time, but at least we landed both those mediums. Should be some pretty decent damage into the Mistlinx's armor. Very nice. 15 left on the leg. I'd like to get as much salvage from this guy as I can. Mistlinx is definitely worth adding to our repertoire. And I think we're going to just stand still and shoot. This should kill the Zoria unless we get really unlucky. Which we have. We got really unlucky. Great. Awesome. Okay, can I get a rear shot with the captain? No. Because we're blocking ourselves, the cicada. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Okay. Got the Howler. Howler can. Okay, let's get those LRM-5s online. It's not a lot of guaranteed damage, but if we can take out some components, that's worthwhile. Yeah, not bad. Good contact. That's a kill. That's a kill. That Miss Lynx is down five salvageable parts. Yes. Okay. There is a chance, however small, we might be able to get that Mist Lynx into service quickly, and at the very least, only engage a couple more before we have one of our own to bring online. So I want my small pulses online here against this Zoria, and that is somewhat better accuracy, so let's go for this, right up and into their faces, and get those small pulse lasers going. Love that purple glare. Alright, half the Clan Wolf Lance is down. This is, by the way, a one skull mission, so if we can handle this, then we can maybe move on to one and a half skulls. A little bit better guaranteed salvage there, and I'd like to stop having to fight against uh, tanks. It's really... I don't really enjoy it all that much. <laughs> okay, we'll reserve down, we'll let one of the tanks move, and they didn't, which means there's no evasion on this IFV. So, let's get over here, let's get our fragile stuff on the move, keep them High evasion and alive. Oh, that's only two. Son of a bitch. Might have just made my problem worse. Okay, still 15 shots going in. Most of them hits on the rear armor of that tank. Rear and side, it looks like. Not too much of a problem. The Whitworth is doing exactly what I wanted to do. I mean, these things are a bit of a joke in terms of firepower compared to most mechs. But firepower isn't what I need right now. So, that works decently well. Let's see if we can get another kill off the Jenner 2C. Of a tank. That looked pretty scattered, but it was enough. Nice, 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 nice. One vehicle remaining, and that shouldn't be too much of a challenge with our still wholly intact lance. Not even a single on the blow through on this engagement. Can't always hope for that, but uh, when you get it, it's very, very nice. Okay. Let's get. Actually, the cicada can still kick decently well because it's non clan, so let's get that going. This is one of the issues we're going to have if we stay in clan space. If we start taking just clan mechs, that means melee is off the table, and melee is very, very effective at times. Okay, well, that's going to be all of the op 4. Stick around for just a second. We'll get back with uh, salvage. This is successful. Two hundred and twenty cold hard sea bills. Fifteen is our new rating with the Merc Review Board, so that's plus ten from our last one, not bad. And just minor ammo costs. Alright, that's fine. No major damage to speak of on our max decent experience. Here's one, two, three, four, five missed links parts. I did confirm, by the way, our Jenner 2C is maxed out for his support slot, so these extra lasers won't help too much. The LRM-10 will be nice. Uh, these things are half weight compared to non-clan versions, so 2.5 tons instead of 5. And they don't have minimum range penalties, so this would be very nice. But I think... Uh, well, we took the medium pulses. I didn't really have a chance to use them. 
and I think my previous words on what's best are kind of wrong. We need better chassis. It's only 25 tonner though. This is just, it's still kind of meh. Huh. 25 tons, lightweight workhorse, light endo steel, XL engines. All right, let's take the two, let's see what we get. Three, not bad, I got the clan LRM 10, that's very nice. That should go right onto our Whitworth the next time we have some downtime, and we'll increase his uh, firepower capabilities, not bad. Also can put on the clan Pharaoh Fibrous. Should be, we'll basically convert a non-clan mech into a clan mech, so that should be decently fun. All right, thank you guys for hanging around, we'll be back again real soon.